Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant have led the Golden State Warriors to back-to-back -back NBA championships, but where do those stars rank on the list of the all-time great Warriors? Stick around in this video for the top 10 greatest Warriors of all time. What's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I truly appreciate it. You have clicked on the right channel for top quality NBA content, so be sure to subscribe with those bell notifications on if you are new here. Without further ado, let's get right into this. At number 10, we have Draymond Green. It is Green's versatility that has helped make Golden State such an unstoppable force over the past few years. Even though he isn't often the one doing the scoring, for three straight seasons where the primary big man spreads the floor by averaging better than 7 assists per game is what makes this death lineup function so lethally. Defense is where his value truly lies. Over the past four seasons, only Andre Drummond has accumulated more defensive win shares. Defense is where his value truly lies. Over the past four seasons, only Andre Andre Drummond has accumulated more defensive win shares. At number 9, we have Clay Thompson. As Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry share the spotlight, well, when Kevin Durant played for the Warriors at least, since he's not there anymore now, it's easy to forget the Warriors also employ a five-time All-Star who is one of the best shooters ever. In NBA history, there have only been 27 instances when a player has made at least 210 three-pointers in the season while converting on 40% of the attempts or better. Thompson has done so in each of the last seven years. So has Curry, by the way. Because of that range, he has an active streak of four seasons while averaging at least 20 points per game. What keeps him from ranking any higher among the Warriors grades is he doesn't do a whole lot else. Thompson isn't much of a passer, he's less of a driver, and his defensive metrics are consistently among the worst on the roster, if not the league. But his lethal three-point stroke makes him nearly irreplaceable asset on the annual title contender. There aren't many players in franchise history who provided this much value. At number eight, we have Nate Thurmond. To put it lightly, Nate Thurmond was good at grabbing rebounds. After a few years of destroying the college glass at the Bowling Green, Thurmond was drafted by San Francisco and became one of the best rebounders in NBA history. Because so much of his career overlapped with Wilk Chamberlain, Thurmond never led the league in rebounds, but he is fifth on the career leaderboard at 15 rebounds per game. That includes his final few seasons with Chicago and Cleveland when he wasn't nearly as dominant in the paint. In his 11th seasons with the Warriors, he put down nearly 17 boards per night. And 1967 to 68, Thurmond joined Chamberlain, Bob Pettit, and Jerry Lucas as the only players to ever average at least 20 points and 20 rebounds per game for a season. He played in just 51 games that year, but he averaged 20.5 points and 22 rebounds. It was one of his five seasons with at least 20 points, as well as one five season that averaged at least 18 rebounds. Dropping in at number 7 is Kevin Durant. With this one exception, only players who spent at least 5 years with the Warriors were considered for a spot in the top 10. But Kevin Durant was the NBA Finals MVP and one of the league's best players for two seasons with the Golden State Warriors, so he has to land somewhere on this list, right? Durant had averaged better than 25 points per game in the last 10 seasons and is showing no signs of stopping. Jumping in at number 6 is Chris Mullen. For more than a decade, Chris Mullen was the Golden State Warriors. Oh, there were other quality players on the roster with him, of course. Most notably, he had Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond, Latrell Sprewell, and Sleepy Floyd as teammates at various points in his first 12 years with the Warriors. But Mullen was the constant on Golden State's roster as the NBA grew in popularity. And for a half a decade, he was one of the best players in the league. From 1985 to 1997, Mullen averaged at least 13.3 points per game in a dozen consecutive seasons with Golden State. But from 1988 to 1992, he averaged better than 25 points per game each year. He didn't lead the league in scoring in any of those seasons, but he scored a combined total of 8,330 points during that time. Only Michael Jordan and Carmelo put up more. 
Dropping in at number 5 is Neil Johnston. It's almost unfair to Neil Johnston to count his first and last seasons in the NBA as part of his career averages. As a rookie, he played 15.5 minutes per game and averaged just 6 points and 5.3 rebounds. It was a similar story 7 years later when those numbers were 14, 6.3, and 5.0 respectively, before a knee injury forced him to retire at the age of 30. And the 6 seasons in between though, he played just shy of 40 minutes per game, averaging 22.3 points and 12 points. 7 rebounds. Johnston led the NBA in rebounds in 1955. He led the league in points in 1953, 1954, and 1955. And he led the league in win shares for five consecutive seasons from 1953 to 1957. That last statistic is absurd because it puts Johnston in an exclusive club with the greatest of the greats. The only other players in NBA history who can boast at least five seasons with the most win shares in the league are Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wood Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James. Dropping in at the number four spot is Paul Arzen. Paul Arzen spent his entire career with this franchise and ended up in the Hall of Fame. He was a mighty fine warrior. Arzen did not play in his age 24 or age 25 seasons because he was serving with the Marines in the Korean War. He also retired from the NBA earlier than most of the greats, playing his final game with the Warriors just a few days before his 34th birthday. He was an all-star in each of his 10 seasons though, averaging better than 20 points per game in 9 of them. There was no MVP award until 1956, but Arzen deserved one in 1952. He averaged 25.4 points and 11.3 rebounds per game that season, leading the NBA in points, win shares, and about a dozen other categories. Dropping in at number 3 is Rick Barry. Most people remember Rick Barry for his unorthodox but highly effective underhanded free throw stroke, but he was very good at much more than one point buckets. Barry is one of just 24 players in NBA history with at least 18,000 points, 5,000 rebounds, and 4,000 assists, and that doesn't even include his time in the ABA. Combine what he did in both leagues, and the only players who can match or exceed him in career points, rebounds, and assists are Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, LeBron James, Karl Malone, Kobe Bryant, Oscar Robinson, John Havlick, Kevin Garnett, and Julius Irving. Barry was also an excellent defender. Steals weren't recorded by the NBA during his first three seasons with the Warriors, but he averaged 2.3 steals per game over his final five years, including leading the NBA in steals in 1974-1975. At number two is Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry's career is only about halfway finished, but there's no question he has already done more for this franchise than any other player. Before Curry became one of the most valuable players in the league, Golden State was a joke. The Warriors made the playoffs just once from 1994 to 2012, and they barely got in as a number eight seed in 2007. But over the past few seasons, they have became a three-point draining juggernaut with three championships. No one had ever made more than 269 three-pointers in a season until six years ago, but Curry has averaged 292.8 triples per year during that time, despite only playing in 51 games in 2017. And finally, for the number one spot, we have Will Chamberlain. Though Will Chamberlain only spent five and a half seasons with the Warriors, three in Philadelphia, two and a half in San Francisco, it was enough for him to become the franchise's all-time leader in win shares. It's almost comical that we spend so much time and energy debating whether Michael Jordan or LeBron James is the greatest player in NBA history when it's clear Chamberlain was the most unstoppable force to ever touch a basketball. During his time with the Warriors, he set the NBA's four highest points per game season averages and the three highest rebounds per game season averages. Jordan is the only other player to ever average at least 36 points per game in a season, but Chamberlain put up 41.5 during the Warriors portion of his career. For heaven's sake, he averaged 50.4 points and 25.7 rebounds per game in his third season in the league. Sure, he was a ball hog, he was a tough player for any coach to handle and he never won a title with the Warriors but he set so many individual records in his 429 games with his franchise that it would be wrong to put him anywhere else in this top spot. Curry might be able to get here after a few more years though. That is it for the video guys, thank you so much for stopping by, I highly appreciate it. If you agree with this list, slap a like on it, and as I always say, if you don't agree, still slap a like on it. It really helps out a lot, more than you can imagine. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe with those bell notifications on so you can be notified when I upload. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. I highly appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.